Britain. Phillips will be using a digital camera with a 400 millimeter lens to acquire about nine images of the uh, shuttle's thermal protection system with a two inch analytical resolution as the shuttle conducts its rotational backflip of 360 degrees at a distance of 600 feet. Krikalov will be using a 400 millimeter lens with a 2x teleconverter, basically an 800 millimeter lens, to acquire about a dozen images covering uh, critical areas around the landing gear doors, the external tank doors, and the elevon coves with one inch analytical resolution. The maneuver itself will take about eight minutes to complete, but the actual uh, sun glare restrictions will provide the uh, station crew members about 93 seconds of usable photography while the shuttle is uh, pitching between 145 and 215 degrees. Now I'll give you a call at 1,000. And it puts us a little at the 1,000 foot point per the timeline. That puts us a little over 10 minutes from the RPM. Yes, Krikalov and Phillips will make their way into the Zvezda service module just a moment or two from now, uh, preparing their cameras and lenses for the rendezvous pitch maneuver digital imagery that they'll be acquiring. They'll be downlinking all of those uh, digital photos. Uh, once uh, the ISS has a KU band communications capability, just a few minutes after contact and capture between uh, Discovery and the station. The docking itself is about an hour and 16 minutes away. Yeah, it's good visual. Shuttle is a little behind us, but uh, we have very good view. Okay, sounds good. As you look uh, down the longitudinal axis of the space station from top to bottom, you're looking at the forward docking port on the Destiny Laboratory of the complex. And at the very bottom, that's the Progress Resupply Ship that is docked uh, to the aft docking port of the Zvezda service module. This uh, graphic display based on uh, computer-generated imagery uh, and data from uh, uh, both the Discovery and the International Space Station showing a range of about 1,100 feet and the approach of Discovery up towards uh, a point just 1,000 feet directly below the International Space Station. That box that is drawn uh, just below the crosshairs shows the area for the rendezvous pitch maneuver. Here in about five minutes, they should be directly below you on the R bar. And this uh, computer generated display shows the relative position of Discovery and the International Space Station, which is in the middle of the crosshairs themselves as Discovery approaches the 1,000 foot point. At which point, uh, Commander Eileen Collins will begin her manual flying of discovery up the radial vector or the R bar. That's the that's the horizontal, the vertical line, I should say, that is drawn between uh, the International Space Station and the Earth. Range is now 1,000 feet, closing 1.3, still a bit to go till uh, our bar arrival. We copy. Okay. Discovery now being manually flown from the aft flight deck by Commander Eileen Collins. Range is 950 feet, closing at a rate of 1.5 feet per second.
The International Space Station growing ever larger in the field of view. Again, this view from a centerline camera mounted in the orbiter docking system. 870 feet separating the two vehicles. Sergey, they're now at 900 feet and closing. Once again, at the point at which Discovery is just 600 feet below the station, Eileen Collins will put the brakes on, wait for the correct lighting conditions, and pilot Jim Kelly, once the rendezvous pitch maneuver begins, again, a three-quarter of a degree rotational maneuver, nose first, backflip, that will uh, then initiate pilot Jim Kelly informing the station crew as to when to begin photography and when to end photography. The is in attitude now and still approaching a little bit more forward at 850 feet. And Sergey, for my benefit, uh, did you hear uh, Vegas's earlier call, uh, just probably two minutes ago, about uh, the ten-minute call? No, he didn't. Okay, sounds good. I'll just keep the calls coming on Space to Ground too. Sounds good. I'll just keep. Thank you. Station spacecraft communicator Charlie Hobaugh keeping uh, Commander Sergei Krikalov apprised of uh, the shuttle's progress toward the point where the rendezvous pitch maneuver would be initiated. 790 feet separating the two vehicles, shuttle closing at a rate of less than one tenth of a foot per second. Go ahead. Yeah, just let you know, we went uh, to manual uh, momentarily and then back to auto track. I went ahead and inhibited everything for now. We'll pick it up post RPM. We copy and concur, thanks. Once the rendezvous pitch maneuver is completed, both uh, the station and shuttle flight control rooms and their respective flight directors, uh, Brian Lunny in the station room and lead flight director Paul Hill here in the shuttle flight control room will be polling their respective flight control teams for a go for docking. 720 feet separating the two vehicles, six tenths of a foot per second is the closure rate. Sergey inside us 700 feet now in closing. 700. Now just moments away from the 600-foot mark and the appropriate uh, entryway for the beginning of the rendezvous pitch maneuver.
A good view through the centerline camera in the orbiter docking system of the Russian modules of the International Space Station. And now our first view from the International Space Station of the shuttle Discovery at a distance of just 600 feet. A discovery, big loop, 650 feet. And Sergey, they are 650 feet now and close. Sergey, they are 600. 600. Looking right down the barrel of the payload bay of Discovery from the International Space Station, 600 feet away, the Raffaello cargo module visible at the rear of the cargo bay. Right behind the aft bulkhead of the crew cabin, that's the orbiter docking system that will come into contact with the forward docking port of the Destiny Laboratory just over an hour from now. In the station flight control room, uh, the report is that uh, all of the solar rays on both the U.S. and Russian segments of the International Space Station's modules are feathered or positioned edge on to provide uh, protection against any inadvertent pluming of those delicate arrays from jet thruster firings by discovery during the final phase of the rendezvous. As Discovery flies 223 miles just north of the northern coast of Africa, a great view of Discovery with the Earth below from the International Space Station. As Discovery uh, fine-tuning uh, its path just, uh, just over 600 feet away from the station, approaching uh, the point at which it will put on the brakes uh, to initiate the rendezvous pitch maneuver. That black line uh, on the top of the left wing of Discovery is actually the shadow of the shuttle's robotic arm. Houston, Alpha, Discovery, RPM start in two, one, now. Sergey, RPM start now. Sergei. The rendezvous pitch maneuver is underway, having begun at 5.15 a.m. Central Time. Understood. Pilot Jim Kelly will next inform the station crew when to initiate photography. This is a three-quarter of a degree rotational backflip, nose forward, to provide about 93 seconds of usable photography time for Krikalov and Phillips, who are poised in the Zvezda service module.
and survey the orbiters through about four or five degrees of pitch now. Survey the orbiters through about four or five degrees of pitch now. Standing by for the command to initiate photography. We see it. Sergey, about uh, 55 degrees more pitch Sergey, to go before we give you the start photo call. Synchronized spaceflight at an altitude of 222 statute miles over Europe. As Discovery continues the rendezvous pitch maneuver, the station crew standing by for the initiation of rendezvous pitch maneuver photography. Sergey, uh, about 10 more seconds, we'll have Sergey. you start clicking your photos. Okay. Alpha, discovery, start photos. Start photos, Sergey. Start photos, Sergey. Photography has begun aboard the International Space Station. Looking out of windows in the Zvezda service module, Sergei Krikalov manning a digital camera with 800 millimeter lens, John Phillips with a 400 millimeter lens, as the rendezvous pitch maneuver continues. Coming through a pitch of about 180, another 15 degrees to go. Another 15 to go. Discovery and photos. And with that uh, direction by pilot Jim Kelly, about uh, a minute and 40 seconds worth of photography accomplished by Krikalov and Phillips. Continue to click and we'll get the aft in here in a minute. Okay. Of course, the uh, station crew free to continue photography as it desires, but the uh, prime areas of interest uh, resulted in about one minute and 40 seconds worth of usable photography.
Once uh, the shuttle returns uh, to a configuration uh, and an orientation with the payload bay facing the International Space Station, the uh, Commander Eileen Collins will uh, begin to reinitiate her approach for docking by uh, moving out in front of the International Space Station to a distance of about 400 feet, at which point she'll begin her final approach for the actual contact and capture of the two vehicles some 57 minutes from now. Again, uh, the rendezvous pitch maneuver began uh, with live television from the International Space Station's cameras at 5.15 a.m. Central Time. The actual RPM photography began about three minutes later at 5.18 for about a minute and 40 seconds worth of photographic capability for Sergei Krikalov and John Phillips. All of that digital imagery will be downlinked uh, just a few minutes after docking when the uh, International Space Station has a uh, downlink capability through the KU band communication system. Are you ready for filter to prop and auto any angles? Vegas, we are go for that and be advised we're going to be ready calm until the end of this pass in about a minute and a half. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston with the rendezvous and approach for docking continuing following the uh, rendezvous pitch maneuver uh, that uh, Eileen Collins executed to enable Sergey Krikalov and John Phillips uh, to capture digital imagery of the shuttle. Here in the shuttle flight control room uh, on the far left of your screen, the Associate Administrator for Space Operations at NASA Headquarters, Bill Reedy, has now joined uh, astronaut Steve Frick at the, uh, at the uh, flight director in Capcom's console uh, discussing uh, the current developments uh, regarding uh, the shuttle's approach for docking, which is now scheduled just 53 minutes from now. Everything apparently went very smoothly and uh, on time and on target with the rendezvous pitch maneuver photography that was executed just a few minutes ago, about a minute and 40 seconds worth of usable photography capability with the correct sunlight conditions uh, to enable Krikalov and Phillips to capture the digital images that will be downlinked just a few minutes after Discovery docks to the station.
ISS on space to ground two. Uh, we're back with you after a short LOS. Okay, thanks, Scorch, and I'm back in the uh, lab now. Okay, John, uh, how did the pictures go from your end? Well, we're downloading both cards right now. I thought the, pro the, the process went real fine. Neither of us saw anything uh, alarming, and we'll have some pictures. In this is Mission Control Houston. Lead Flight Director Paul Hill now polling his team of flight controllers to get a go for docking, now just 48 minutes away. So we just, it sounded like everything coming over Space to Ground 2 was working well. Um, for, for the rest of Rendezvous, if you'd like, uh, if you're hearing the big loop calls, if you respond back on Space to Ground 2, uh, or now that you're in the lab, you can respond back on the big loop. Uh, that would be great. If we don't hear you call back, uh, we can just echo calls on Space to Ground 2, whatever your preference is. You keep echoing the calls on Space to Ground 2 so Sergey can hear them in the uh, in the SM. And um, and I'll be listening to I may respond on Space to Ground 1. And by the way, those range calls were very helpful. Okay, sounds good. And uh, they're right now uh, approaching halfway through the Torva, and we'll try to give you some range marks on the way in. Torva, and we'll try to... Thanks a lot, Scorch. This is Mission Control Houston. With the rendezvous pitch maneuver having been executed by Commander Eileen Collins, she is now executing what is called TORVA, which is a twice orbital rate R-bar to V-bar approach, moving up from the radial vector directly below the station to a point about 400 feet directly in front of the station. Discovery will be at that point a short time from now so that uh, Commander Eileen Collins can begin her final approach for docking that is scheduled about 46 minutes from now.
Hi, it says Houston, no response required. Shuttle is about a minute and a half from V-Bar arrival, range 360 feet. Discover Houston on two, we're getting intermittent radar now, so we'd like you to inhibit all the data for the radar. Ground 2, V-Bar established. We'll give you the uh, radar for comm if you want it. Discovery Houston, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, you can put it in work. Uh, we won't get KU, though, for about another half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. Copy that. We'll put it in work slowly. This is Mission Control Houston from cameras on the International Space Station, a view of the shuttle Discovery, just 337 feet away, directly in front of the station on the velocity vector or V-bar, that's the direction of travel of the two vehicles, as they pass over Southeast Asia moving from northwest to southeast about to enter an orbital sunset at an altitude of 223 statute miles some 39 minutes away from the docking of the shuttle to the station. The first time that a shuttle will have arrived at the complex since November 25th, 2002.
throughout the course of the night and the early morning hours, uh, the rendezvous and approach uh, of Discovery has been rock solid. All of the rendezvous burns executed on time and perfectly. The rendezvous pitch maneuver, uh, which uh, was executed by Eileen Collins, a three quarter of a degree rotational maneuver, a backflip to uh, permit the space station crew of Sergei Krikalov and John Phillips about a minute and 40 seconds of usable photography time with high-powered lenses and digital cameras to map uh, the thermal protection system heat shield on the orbiter. All of that has gone by the book. As you look down the payload bay of Discovery, the large cylindrical object is the Raffaello multipurpose logistics module that houses some 15 tons of supplies that will be transferred to the station. About 13 tons of discarded items and trash will be loaded into Raffaello for the trip back home. Right in the middle of the payload bay is the external stowage platform, the tool shed, if you will, that will be attached to the Quest airlock of the International Space Station on the third and final spacewalk of the mission to be conducted by Soichi Noguchi and Steve Robinson. At the very rear of the cargo bay of Discovery is a brand new control moment gyroscope that will replace one in the Z-1 truss of the station that failed back on June 8th, 2002. Next to the control moment gyro is the thermal protection system sample box that contains deliberately damaged tile and reinforced carbon-carbon samples that will be experimented with by Noguchi and Robinson using new tools and techniques and materials uh, for tile and RCC repair. That will be conducted near the beginning of the first spacewalk for Noguchi and Robinson on Saturday. From this point on, uh, Commander Eileen Collins will begin a very uh, glacial approach for docking to the International Space Station, moving inside a very, very narrow and precisely defined corridor or cone in which she will maintain a precise alignment between the orbiter docking system, the docking mechanism, the outer ring of that docking mechanism, and a comparable docking mechanism on the forward port of the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station. When the two vehicles are just uh, a foot or so apart, pilot Jim Kelly will arm reaction control system jets for what is known as a post-contact thrust maneuver. That is a quick jet firing, a quick pulse of the reaction control system jets that will trip uh, the capture latches and initiate the alignment between the two docking rings. That capture is accomplished once the two ring segments are latched together, allowing metal flanges to engage latches and hooks on either side of the docking interface. There will be relative motion for several minutes between the two vehicles. Imagine two spacecraft in excess of 100 tons coming into contact with each other in a precise choreographed maneuver of less than a tenth of a foot per second of relative motion. Once that relative motion is dampened out between the two vehicles, the outer ring of the shuttle, now that hooks and latches will have been engaged, will retract to pull the station in and form a hard mate and a tight seal between the two spacecraft. Be advised that shuttle is now inside of 300 feet, closing at 0.16. No response required. Hey, folks.
Discovery Houston on the big loop. Wanted to let you know you are go to proceed inside 170 feet, and you are go for docking. We just want to confirm that the airlock fan act and ODS volume prep is complete. We don't have much insight into that. Houston Discovery on the big loop. We copy the go inside 170 feet and go for docking. Docking mechanism power up and docking prep are complete. Airlock fan activation, ODS volume prep is in work. We'll call it down in just a minute. We copy, thanks. And for Sergey and John, no response required. Be advised the uh, shuttle has been given a go to proceed inside a 170 feet and go for docking. Alpha Discovery on the big loop. We are 250 feet and closing. And for John and Sergey, Discovery now inside of 250 feet. Discovery now inside of. Yeah, thanks, Vegas. We're waiting for you. We'll knock when we get there.
laser down to for Rondo, but just to let you know, a handheld laser is matching up nicely with TCS. We copy, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston, one day, 20 hours, 13 minutes into the flight of Discovery. The shuttle now just 200 feet away from the International Space Station. Commander Eileen Collins flying manually from the aft flight deck of the orbiter, looking out of the overhead windows, continuing uh, to take television from the International Space Station's cameras as the station and the shuttle fly in tandem over the continent of Australia, moving from northwest to southeast at an altitude of 222 statute miles. About 37 minutes ago, while the shuttle was 600 feet directly below the station, Collins initiated a maneuver that lasted about uh, five minutes in duration. It was the rendezvous pitch maneuver, the three-quarter of a degree backflip, nose forward rotational maneuver that afforded the space station crew of Sergei Krikalov and John Phillips about 93 seconds of available photography time, actually about 100 seconds as it turns out, in which they used uh, 400 millimeter and 800 millimeter lenses and digital cameras uh, to capture uh, imagery of the thermal protection system heat shield on the orbiter. Give me a lot of plus or minus on that time estimate. This view uh, through the shuttle's S-band communication system called sequential still video, uh, video that basically refreshes itself every few seconds, showing a pressurized mating adapter number two out of a centerline camera mounted in the orbiter docking system. That is the forward docking port on the Destiny Laboratory of the complex to which Discovery will link up about 24 minutes or so from now. There is no hard, fast rule to dock exactly on time. That's not required anymore. Since the shuttle and station are linked together through space-to-space -space orbiter radio communication systems permitting uh, the station and shuttle crews to talk to one another. Go ahead, Vegas. Airlock fan activation, ODS volume prep is complete. We feel ourselves complete with everything on the approach with RPM side of the cue card, and we are uh, already working D bar approach post RPM. Uh, we copy and concur, thanks. As Collins uh, brings the shuttle uh, to within about 100 feet or so, she'll be entering a very narrow corridor to maintain an alignment between the orbiter docking system and the forward docking port on the Destiny Laboratory. That's uh, what you're looking at right now through the centerline camera view. That's pressurized mating adapter number two. On the other side of that docking interface is the Destiny Laboratory. That's where Krikalov and Phillips will be awaiting the uh, pressurization of the vestibule between the two docking mechanisms once leak checks are performed. They will then open the hatch on their side of the docking interface, as will Collins on her side of the docking interface, and the nine crew members will be united. When Collins uh, approaches uh, to within about 30 to 40 feet away, There'll be a call out as to whether or not she needs to perform what is called an angular flyout. That would be uh, a minor correction maneuver to correct any slight misalignment between uh, the two docking mechanisms if that should become required. However, uh, at the moment, uh, the rendezvous officer reports uh, that uh, the two docking mechanisms are precisely aligned. Collins maintaining uh, very fine tuning of the uh, flying of Discovery, maintaining a closure rate of about a tenth of a foot per second.
And no response required for John and Sergey. Discovery now 150 feet and still closing about 0.17 now. One hundred twenty feet now separating uh, Discovery and the International Space Station. Again, this view from cameras on the International Space Station looking at Discovery as the two spacecraft pass over the South Pacific at an altitude of 222 statute miles. We'll be moving into an orbital sunrise about 21 minutes from now. Eileen Collins uh, maintaining a precise alignment between the orbiter docking system and the forward docking port of the Destiny Laboratory. 118 feet separating the two craft. Collins continuing to maintain a closure rate of about a tenth of a foot per second. This is a uh, computer-generated uh, display 
based on real-time data being received from the shuttle Discovery, showing a Discovery on the velocity vector right in front of the space station. Range is uh, 98 feet, closure rate one-tenth of a foot per second. And the view in the lower right-hand corner is uh, the view out of the centerline camera looking uh, down the barrel of pressurized mating adapter number two, which is the forward docking port on Destiny. Go ahead. Yeah, when you guys get coverage for anything you want, you're uh, welcome to come on board and take the center line or the flight deck video, whatever you guys want to take. Okay, we copy Vegas. Thanks. And uh, if we uh, want to take the flight deck camera, we'll give you a call before we come on board. That'd be great, Steve. Thanks. A reminder, just a few minutes after docking, when the International Space Station has a KU band downlink capability once again through the tracking and data relay satellite system, Krikalov and Phillips will be downlinking all of the digital imagery that they shot during the rendezvous pitch maneuver, the rotational maneuver that afforded uh, the two station photographers about a minute and 40 seconds worth of opportunity to uh, capture imagery of the thermal protection heat shield on Discovery as the two craft were flying uh, over northern Africa. This view again from station uh, television cameras showing a Discovery and its uh, payload bay lights illuminated in the orbiter docking system, the forward nose jets firing as Eileen Collins continues her methodical approach at a rate of about one-tenth of a foot per second, now just 78 feet separating the two spacecraft. She is in the corridor maintaining a five degree uh, dead band correlation uh, between the outer bands of that corridor, maintaining that precise alignment between the two docking mechanisms. Contact and capture expected about 13 minutes or so from now. Sixty-five feet now separating Discovery from the International Space Station. Once docking occurs, uh, there will be relative motion between the two vehicles as the two docking mechanisms will spend several minutes uh, resting against one another, dampening out the relative motion of two 100-ton spacecraft coming into contact with one another. That will initiate the uh, beginning of the uh, uh, capture of the hooks and latches against one another and then the ultimate retraction of the outer docking ring on the orbiter docking system to form a hard mate between the two vehicles. That whole process usually takes several minutes to accomplish. John and Sergey, no response required. Showing 60 feet now, closing point one. 
station spacecraft communicator Charlie Hobaugh keeping the station crew informed on the uh, progress of discovery for its link up. Now just 14 minutes before the two spacecraft enter an orbital sunrise over the uh, northwestern coast of South America, about to begin a northwest to southeast approach that will carry them across the equator right about that time. Once a hard mate has been accomplished between the two vehicles, there will be a period of leak checks over the course of about an orbit or 90 minutes that will be followed by uh, the pressurization of the passageway or vestibule, the small passageway uh, between uh, the corridor from the two docking mechanisms leading uh, to the hatchway to the Destiny Laboratory. The two flight control teams uh, here in Houston, the station and shuttle flight control teams and the Russian Mission Control Center uh, in Korolyov outside Moscow will be evaluating uh, the pressurization of that passageway before approval is given for the opening of the hatches and the greeting uh, and uh, welcoming between the nine crew members. Here in the shuttle flight control room, the lead flight director for STS-114, Paul Hill, second from uh, your right, and uh, just to his right, uh, shuttle spacecraft communicator Steve Frick. Approximately point one. Discovery now 49 feet away. Whether or not the, the shuttle requires a short period of station keeping to reevaluate the alignment between the two docking mechanisms will uh, come uh, at a distance of about 30 feet or so. Right now, the two docking mechanisms are precisely aligned. Distance now 40 feet, Collins closing at one-tenth of a foot per second, maintaining her approach. We should be getting downlink television from the shuttle Discovery momentarily, and there it is, looking right down the eye of the docking port on the forward end of the Destiny Laboratory and the uh, standoff cross target. No need to respond. We'll be coming on board with, for flight tech video. Commander Eileen Collins at the aft flight deck of Discovery, flying the final few feet just prior to docking. Discovery, we show no fly out required. We're initiating the final approach from 30 feet. Houston copies. Project station copies, Vegas. That call out by uh, pilot Jim Kelly indicating uh, a precise alignment between the two docking mechanisms. No, uh, no guidance required to uh, further fine tune the approach. Eileen Collins now pressing in, 
29 feet away, closing at a rate of a tenth of a foot per second. Docking represents the start of eight days of joint operations between the seven crew members aboard Discovery and the Expedition 11 crew aboard the International Space Station in this, their 105th day in space, their 103rd day aboard the station after they arrived on board on April 17th in their Soyuz TMA-6 capsule. Discovery now 25 feet. Discovery now. Discovery now two zero feet and closing. Discovery now two zero feet. Thank you, Scorch. You're welcome. Discovery now eighteen feet away, maintaining its approach. The rendezvous officer here in the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room reports a perfect approach by Commander Eileen Collins. The post-contact thrust maneuver is now armed. That's the short burst of the reaction control system jets to initiate the capture of the hooks and latches on both sides of the docking interface, now nine feet separating the two spacecraft. And there's six feet contact in approximately one minute. Approximately one minute. Okay. Discovery now four feet away, standing by for contact and capture of the International Space Station. And use the station, the RPM photo download is complete. Copy, John, thanks. Discovery, we have 
contact and capture. Shuttle is in free drift. Docking confirmed. ISS is in free drift. The space shuttle has returned to the International Space Station for the first time since November 25th, 2002. We copy and we concur, Vegas. Both vehicles now in free drift, all other thrusters disabled uh, to provide an opportunity for the two docking mechanisms to dampen out relative motion against one another. Docking occurred over the South Pacific just west of Chile at 6.18 a.m. Central Time. This view now from payload bay cameras showing uh, the shuttle and the station locked up at the docking interface between the orbiter docking system and the pressurized mating adapter number two, the forward docking port on the Destiny Laboratory. Once uh, that relative motion is uh, dampened out and hooks and latches are engaged, that docking ring will be retracted to form a hard mate between the two vehicles. That will take several minutes to accomplish. Once again, the docking occurred right on the money at 6.18 a.m. Central Time as the International Space Station and the shuttle Discovery with nine crew members on both vehicles linked up over South Pacific, west of Chile. Go ahead, Wendy. Hey, we'd like to perform step three of the docking sequence two card. We see no relative motion for 60 seconds. And we concur. We're ready for step three. In work. Discovery air to ground 2 TCS deactivation is complete. Everything was nominal. We copy. Uh, Houston Station, we're wondering when we're going to have a go to open the MPEV and do the leak check. At what point does that happen? Stand by, John. Houston Discovery air to ground 2, we're ready for step 4 on the backing sequence 2 card. We concur, ready for step 4. Hey, John, basically we'll need to just uh, give you a call once we get a good heart mate condition. Uh, we'll just have to give you a heads up on that, so we'll call you into it at that time. Okay, yeah, we're standing by to, to do step two of that uh, uh, postdoc procedure, and we're on your call. Thanks. Okay, sounds good.
Now flying into an orbital sunrise uh, just off the west coast of South America. A good view from cameras on the International Space Station of the shuttle Discovery, looking down uh, along the port wing of the orbiter and the uh, radiator from the open payload bay door. Discovery uh, docked uh, to the International Space Station about five minutes ago as the uh, two craft flew over the South Pacific, moving from southwest to northeast at an altitude of 222 statute miles. Stand by, I'm checking, Wendy. Discovery Houston, uh, Wendy, we saw indications of a stuck damper, so we still see some oscillations. Uh, we're going to wait just a little bit before we uh, give you go for step six. Copy that. Houston, uh, Wendy, we're happy now. We're ready for step six. It's in work. On board Discovery, the crew continuing its post-docking activities, uh, disabling uh, their navigational tools that were used during the rendezvous phase of uh, this morning's approach for docking. A panoramic view of the uh, crew cabin from overhead from uh, station cameras Again, uh, the relative motion between the two vehicles continuing to dampen out a bit as uh, the two docking mechanisms settle against one another. Once that relative motion is uh, virtually still, then hooks and latches uh, will engage and uh, the outer ring on the orbiter docking system will be commanded to retract to form a hard mate between the two vehicles. There's a good view now of uh, the orbiter docking system and above it uh, the black uh, component is uh, the forward portion of pressurized mating adapter number two, which is the forward docking port on the Destiny Laboratory of the complex. Discover Houston, uh, Wendy, we're go for step eight. The mechanical systems officer here in Mission Control reports a good ring alignment and the ring is driving. More than 300 tons of space hardware now mated together, the 200-ton International Space Station, the 100-ton Space Shuttle Discovery.
as the shuttle station complex uh, approaches the equator, about to move out into the uh, open Atlantic. You can see the ring continuing to drive. That will form a hard mate between the two vehicles, after which the two crews on either side of the docking interface will, become, will begin about an hour and a half worth of leak checks prior to the pressurization of the small passageway between the two docking ports and the ability for the two crews to open hatches and greet one another. That's not where the work ends, however, for the day. Once a hatch opening is complete and the two crews have had a chance to greet one another, there will be a safety briefing conducted by the Expedition 11 crew to familiarize the newly arrived Discovery astronauts with the emergency evacuation procedures should they become necessary. That would be followed uh, by Wendy Lawrence and Jim Kelly moving uh, to the robotics workstation in Destiny to begin uh, their work as space station robotic arm operators. They will move the Canadarm2 over to the starboard sill of the shuttle Discovery, grapple the midpoint grapple fixture on the orbiter boom sensor system, lift it out of its moorings on the starboard sill, and conduct a handoff to the shuttle robotic arm that will be operated from the aft flight deck of Discovery by Andy Thomas and Charlie Camarda. That will enable the boom to remain grappled uh, to the shuttle robotic arm for the remainder of the eight days of joint docked operations. The mechanical systems officer now reports that uh, with the ring having retracted, hooks and latches are now engaging to form a hard mate between the two vehicles. Hey, John, no response required. No, they are through uh, the ring drive. They've ringed in, and uh, hooks are driving right now. They've ringed in. Okay, thanks. This view from payload bay cameras in the shuttle Discovery, looking at the panorama of the International Space Station, the Destiny Laboratory, right above it is the Unity module, the connecting node that links the U.S. and Russian segments of the International Space Station. That uh, circular uh, port with the black uh, dot in the middle is the common berthing mechanism on the nadir side of Unity to which the Raffaello multi-purpose logistics module, the cargo module that you see in the cargo bay in the lower left-hand portion of your screen. Looks like we're ready to pick up in step 14. We concur, Wendy. Raffaello in the lower left-hand portion of your screen will be grappled tomorrow by the station robotic arm, which you see uh, mated to the Destiny Laboratory in its crooked position. It will uh, reach down and pick up uh, the Raffaello and lift it out of the payload bay once retention latches are released and berth it to that uh, circular port that you see uh, near the top of your screen on the nadir side of the Unity connecting node. 
Uh, to the right is the Quest airlock from which uh, U.S.-based spacewalks are normally conducted from the International Space Station. The three spacewalks on this mission, however, will be conducted out of the Space Shuttle's airlock. And there's a view from the uh, camera on the outboard uh, side of the S-1 truss, the starboard truss of the International Space Station, showing Discovery linked up to the forward port of the Destiny Laboratory. And in the upper right-hand portion of your screen, the Canadarm2, the station robotic arm. So we concur, Wendy. And John, if you're ready, you can pick up with step two for the PMA2 leak check. Two for the... Discovery on air ground two, we're complete with the docking sequence two card. We copy and concur, Wendy. Nice job. That went very smoothly. It's always so much easier than the sim. ISS Houston on space to ground two for John. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Charlie. Yeah, I didn't know if you heard my earlier call, John. It might have been uh, might have been blocked by uh, an air-to-ground call, but you are going to pick up in step two of the PMA-2 leak check. Okay, that's in work. Thanks. We're following along. Houston Station, space to ground two. Uh, we opened the MPEV at 1136 straight up, and the pressure in the PMA is 718 millimeters. Okay, at 1136, 718 millimeters. Okay, Thanks, John. 718 millimeters. Okay, and we're in the five minute wait on step 2.3. Got you. Follow along with you. This is Mission Control Houston, one day, 20 hours, 59 minutes into the flight of Discovery. A good view of the orbiter linked up uh, to the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station. 20 minutes after Commander Eileen Collins guided uh, Discovery to an on-time, precise link-up 
of the shuttle to the station, the first time that a shuttle docking to the station had been accomplished since November 25, 2002, when the shuttle Endeavour arrived at the complex on the STS-113 mission. On both sides of the docking interface aboard Discovery, uh, post-docking procedures are being uh, accomplished by uh, the seven astronauts on board as they prepare for a series of leak checks prior to the opening of hatches on their side of the docking interface. Aboard the International Space Station, comparable activity taking place by Expedition 11 Commander Sergei Krikalov and Flight Engineer John Phillips as the two crews prepare for eight days of joint docked operations. We will be losing this uh, television signal from the International Space Station in about seven minutes. And at that point, at about 6.45 a.m. Central Time, we will replay for you the spectacular television that came from the station about uh, an hour and a half ago when Eileen Collins executed the rendezvous pitch maneuver uh, while the uh, shuttle was 600 feet directly below the station. It was a, uh, a, about a five-minute maneuver, affording one minute and 40 seconds worth of usable photography time for Krikalov and Phillips as they used uh, digital cameras equipped with 400-millimeter and 800-millimeter lenses out of windows in the Zvezda service module to uh, document the thermal protection system heat shield on discovery. The 400-millimeter lenses... Uh, the 400 millimeter lens uh, and the digital camera used by Philips was designed to capture imagery of the upper surfaces of the orbiter and the thermal protection system acreage, while the 800 millimeter lens and the digital camera used by Krikalov was designed to capture imagery uh, of a very high resolution, one inch anal analytical resolution of the main landing gear door seals, the nose landing gear door seals, the external tank umbilical well door seals, and the Elevon Cove areas of the orbiter. That imagery has now all been downlinked uh, to the ground for analysis uh, by the imagery teams here in uh, Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center and for discussion later today by the mission management team, which convenes its daily meeting at 1 p.m. Central Time. Again, uh, about five minutes from now at 6.45 a.m. Central Time, we'll be replaying that rendezvous pitch maneuver video uh, that was taken by uh, television cameras, external television cameras on the International Space Station. Discovery, we have you loud and clear now. Uh, we are getting a bunch of blockage from the station while we're in this attitude, uh, but go ahead. I just want to check with you before we push the LVLH button. Outstanding, John. Thanks. Discovery Houston, uh, you are go for LVLH, Eileen. Thank you, that he is starting uh, page 8-12, post docky hatch. Hey, John, as you press through at the uh, bottom of step three, you could pass that on for us. just let us know when you're done, but you are going to be go to open that lab forward hatch. Discovery Houston looks like we might have a solid lock now. Uh, Eileen, you are go for LVLH, and uh, we show okay, only about 10 minutes uh, left uh, right required for the uh, post docking hatch leak check. Okay, John, thanks. Sounds good. Andy wants uh, me to let you know that he's on page 8-12, and he's starting that. Okay, John, thanks. Thank you. Okay, John, thanks. Thank you. Okay, John, thanks. Thank you. Okay, John, thanks. As you can hear by the variety of conversation from the two flight control rooms, uh, the crew members on both sides of the docking interface on the shuttle station complex are beginning uh, the long series of procedures to accomplish leak checks that will be followed by the pressurization of the vestibule or the passageway uh, between uh, the shuttle and the station that will lead to the opening of the hatches uh, between the two vehicles uh, about an hour and a half or so from now.
Coming up uh, in about uh, two minutes, we'll replay at 6.45 a.m. Central Time the rendezvous pitch maneuver video from the external cameras on the International Space Station. The uh, rendezvous pitch maneuver was executed uh, to perfection by Commander Eileen Collins. She arrived uh, at a point about 600 feet directly below the International Space Station, put on the brakes, and at 5.15 a.m. Central Time, about an hour and a half ago, she began a three-quarter of a degree per second backflip, nose-forward rotational maneuver of 360 degrees that lasted about five minutes. That enabled uh, Sergei Krikalov and John Phillips on board the International Space Station a minute and 40 seconds of photography time using their digital cameras and high-powered lenses to capture two sets of digital images that have been downlinked to the ground for analysis by the imagery experts here at the Johnson Space Center. This is Mission Control Houston with Discovery and the International Space Station safely docked together. This was the view an hour and a half ago as Discovery was 600 feet directly below the International Space Station. This view from the external cameras on the International Complex showing uh, the rendezvous pitch maneuver that was executed uh, by Discovery. Again, it was a rotational maneuver, nose forward, backflip of about three quarters of a degree per second that provided uh, a minute and 40 seconds worth of photography for Sergei Krikalov and John Phillips on board the complex. This maneuver was executed uh, while the two spacecraft flew 223 miles above the Earth just off uh, the northern coast of Africa. Again, this is a replay of the rendezvous pitch maneuver that began at 5.15 a.m. Central Time this morning. The uh, pitch maneuver was executed in a very smooth fashion, a very methodical uh, backflip by the orbiter in uh, synchronous space flight with the International Space Station. Again, uh, Sergei Krikalov and John Phillips were in the Zvezda service module looking out of two windows, looking straight down at the orbiter, documenting uh, with their high-powered lenses and digital cameras two sets of photographs of the thermal protection system heat shield on Discovery with a uh, specific concentration on the uh, belly of the orbiter and areas around the main landing gear doors, the nose landing gear door seals, the external tank umbilical well door seals, and the Elevon Cove area of the shuttle. Discovery Houston on air to ground one for the maneuver called out in the timeline at 2100. Go ahead. 
Uh, at Discovery, we are ready whenever you are for the uh, maneuver called out at uh, 2100 in the flight plan to minus XLV minus ZVV. Thank you, Houston. And Discovery will maneuver the stack at this time. Discover Houston air to ground two. Uh, if someone's available who's going to be going into the uh, uh, AP into the uh, ODS once we get it open, I have some uh, things we'd like you to look for on the APDS when you have time. Ready, copy. What we were seeing on the ground there, uh, post uh, after we got it uh, hooked up, is that we have a, a single release indication for manual release on the. Uh, APDS capture latch. Uh, it's no concern for us. We're fully hooked, but uh, we're going to want to look at it when we uh, when you get in there after opening the hatches. And I just have a description for what we'd like you to look for. Go ahead, Ethan. Hey, Wendy. What we're looking for is the. Uh, manual release for the capture latch. It's on the inside of the pedal, uh, kind of vertically hinged at the top, uh, hinged up near the point of the pedal. And uh, if it is in the manual release position, it'll be swung slightly inwards towards the center line of the uh, ODS. Uh, if you see that on one of the uh, capture latch manual releases, we'd like you to press it back outboard uh, flush, and you should feel it latch. Steve, and we'll take a look when we get in there. Thanks a lot. Again, you're watching a, a videotape replay, uh, now complete, of the uh, rendezvous pitch maneuver that was executed by uh, the shuttle Discovery at 5.15 Central Time this morning. It was a five-minute maneuver, a three-quarter of a degree rotational maneuver, nose forward, to permit uh, Sergei Krikalov and John Phillips on board the International Space Station one minute and 40 seconds of photography time to capture high-resolution digital imagery of the thermal protection system on the shuttle. That uh, Those digital images uh, with the 400-millimeter lens afforded a two-inch analytical resolution capability. The 800-millimeter lens afforded a one-inch analytical resolution capability for the uh, imagery experts down here at the Johnson Space Center to begin poring over as part of the ongoing iterative process of collecting imagery of the shuttle and its thermal protection system over the course of uh, the first portion of this mission that began with the launch from the Kennedy Space Center back on Tuesday. Thank you. 
Calgary for the Group B power down. Go ahead, Vegas. Any chance we put any or all of that in work now? I'm checking, Vegas. Hey, John, thanks for waiting. You can perform step two of 2.106, the hatch open and duct install procedure bypass config, which will be equalizing with ODS vestibule. Okay, I'll just go to step two. Good copy, Sergey. Yeah, Houston Station, Number we're opening the uh, APAS equalization down. valve now. Three, two, one, mark. Hey, Vegas, so you have a go to work the uh, Group B power down with the exception of the set contraction. We're going to wait till we get in attitude before we do a set contraction. Also, at this time, uh, we'd like to get IMU 3 deselected. Copy, we'll get the IMU and the star tracker. Sounds good.